Hey everyone, welcome back to Medallia's Leading with Experience. I'm so excited to be here with you and we have an amazing guest. Our guest today is Greg Melia, who is the CEO of the Customer Experience Professionals Association, also known to many of you as the CXPA. Greg, welcome to Medallia's Leading Experience. I'm really excited to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being with us. Bill, Bill, I'm so, so glad, glad we found time for this, this and, and thank you for having me as a guest. Oh, we've got a lot of great topics to cover today. I'm really excited to get into it. But before we do, Greg, for like the 0.1% of the population that's probably viewing this that is not familiar with the CXPA, can you give us just a 30-second overview uh, of the association? Thanks. Thanks. Uh, CXPA, CXPA, or the Customer Experience, Experience Professionals Association, Association, is the global nonprofit, independent, independent professional, professional membership society for those that are interested in and advancing the practice of customer experience, experience. whether you are a CX professional, a student who's interested in the field, or a uh, consultant or provider who supports the CX community. Uh, we also uh, issue the CCXP, Certified Customer Experience Professional Credential, and I'm sure we'll touch on some of the other things that we do in the course of the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, look, you know, uh, we've talked about this uh, in the past. Customer experience as a discipline has evolved so much over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Can you take us through maybe a brief history from your perspective to where we are today, I know you've got a pretty unique perspective here too, and I think our listeners would love to hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's really important, important that we think about the history uh, of where we've come from, uh, what, what that gives us the strengths and what that gives us as, as weaknesses, uh, and how it sets us up for our next iteration and, and where we're going. Um, I'll go ahead and be very selfish. You know, I'll, I'll sort of start the uh, uh, history of customer experience in the mid '90s because. Uh, that's, That's when, when I was uh, studying at uh, William and Mary, uh, and also the year that I got to meet W. Edwards Deming. Uh, and uh, so I, I take those two things, and I, and I would point out that uh, prior to customer experience, we had the quality management movement. We had uh, definitely a focus on consumer relations uh, in some areas. But the term customer experience itself is, is widely tagged to Lou Carbone in 1994 in a journal uh, article uh, in the marketing field. Uh, you know, and I think that it's important to recognize that in the mid-90s, we started to have this idea that companies could do better by doing better. <laughs> and uh, that's really what, what customer experience is, is, you know, is about, is, is looking at that whole journey uh, for the customers. It, it wasn't, wasn't until 2011 that CXPA was founded, founded. and it was founded because all of a sudden we looked around and we started seeing that a limited number of companies were appointing chief customer officers or creating a customer experience department. And so that became a space where it's, well, if we're going to have this, we should start exchanging ideas. Uh, and that's really where CXPA began. In 2014, we took the step to create the CCXP credential. And, and that, that really helped, helped to advance the professionalism. But, but we've still been building along the way for those questions of recognition and definition and mm -hmm. standards. Uh, and, and so it really wasn't even until this last year, 2022, that you saw both Michigan State uh, establishing a uh, master's in uh, customer experience uh, and uh, CXBA publishing the uh, CX Book of Knowledge uh, that, that really, really allows us to say there is a uh, independent consensus space. space. So, so the, the term has become widely used. You know, you, you go out on Google, Google and I think you come up with several million results in less than a second. But, but is it widely understood? understood? That's, that's, that's what we, we should talk about today. today. <laughs> well, I, I think that's a great sort of maybe segue into the next question. But um, I love the book that you produce. I've, I was able to meet you in D.C. last year, and you, you were kind enough to share with me. And the Michigan State reference, Lou Carbone, who's a who's an adjunct even at, at Michigan State. So it's great to have him involved there. But, you know, if, if you think about sort of that definition then, Greg, how do you and the CXPA define it? And I want to also get into, you know, as part of that, maybe that definition, what do you what is like the one thing that you wish CX leaders, practitioners would get right, or maybe the other way to ask that is, you know, what do you think they're getting wrong? And maybe that's part of the overall answer in the definition piece, but uh, let's answer that, the definition piece first. 
Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's go ahead and start with the definition. definition. Uh, you, you know, know CXBA uh, worked on uh, bringing together different leaders, different perspectives to create a consensus definition. Uh, and, and, and that is that customer experience is the perception that an individual has of an organization, one that is formed across all touch points, technology, and time. And so uh, it's important to realize that customer experience is owned by the customer. <laughs> you know, we have customer experience management, which is our attempt to, to influence it. Uh, but the actual customer experience is that cumulative effect uh, that the individual has. And, and I, I think, think that that's, that's important because along the way, I think, I think there have been some real misconceptions. You know, uh, the, the first place, uh, and, and uh, hi, Dad, dad I you're watching this. Um, you know, my, my dad, dad will point out that whenever he goes to the uh, grocery store and he has a particularly kind uh, checkout attendant, that uh, that customer service moment is what he thinks of first with customer experience. And, yeah. and I think there's a lot of people out there who think, think about um, um, that frontline experience uh, as, as the totality. But, but it's not enough because we have, have to think about the technology that is creating that checkout experience, experience the design that is creating that grocery store, you know, the, the brand and the trust that has, has been created along the way. Uh, and the actual the, the operational side, you know, if you went into a grocery store and you didn't have the products and you didn't have quality products, that would be a problem too. All of those things contribute to the customer experience, it's not, not just that smiling clerk uh, that, uh, that uh, takes take something off the top of the uh, uh, shelf. The uh, second, second major misconception that I think I see in customer experience is people getting confused by these, what I would call unicorn marketing moments. <laughs> you know, uh, Bill, you're in uh, you know, the DC area. Uh, yeah. I wonder if you remember that snowstorm that stranded people on 95 for 18 hours. I was still living in New Jersey at the time of that storm, and I got it up there. But I remember like Snowmageddon. I think it was it was uh, called. That. <laughs> and uh, I remember reading this uh, article uh, along, along the way, way and uh, there was a driver of a bed, bread truck, and he opened the back of his truck and started handing out bread. And, and you know that is of course a very, very good, good experience for someone who's stranded and hungry. And hungry. But, but it's, it's not a customer experience program. program. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not sustainable. Um, it's, it's a unicorn, unicorn moment, uh, and, and those unicorn, unicorn moments and those moments of wow are important, but they should be strategically applied. applied. You know, we, we just came back from CX Leaders Advance, and uh, Megan Burns used the phrase that, that customer experience is a commitment to being consistently good and strategically amazing. Uh, and, and I think that that is, is more of what we need to do, is focus more on the consistently good and, and recognize that strategically amazing or that element of surprise and wow is um, should, should be applied uh, sparingly to the right moments because uh, moments of wow are often expensive. <laughs> and, and so, so if, you, if you want the, what, what have we failed to do? do? Bill, people, people, people don't talk about connecting it to the business, you know, and how we're making sure that we're not just making the customer happy, but we're also making the organization's commitment to sustainable operations a possible uh, and, and that we're keeping our employees out of balance. And Greg, I guess that's from your definition. That's part of sort of broader customer experience management, not customer the customer experience, so, so to speak. So can, would you then say, to use maybe Megan's terms, would you say that customer experience is the consistently good and the strategically wow is sort of the business end of that? Yeah, 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 I, 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 I have, have no objection. objection. I, I guess maybe, maybe we should start, start writing our different theorems and hypotheses, and <laughs> supporting postulates, and all those things that I, I've tried to forget from geometry and space. <laughs> but uh, you know, yes, uh, we, 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 we do need that uh, consistently good and, and strategically amazing. Uh, I, I like to say that a good customer experience. Uh, is, is one, one that is good, good for the customer, customer is good for the uh, organization, organization, and is good for the, the employees. Because if, if it is exceptionally good for one, but not sufficient for the other two, it, yeah. it's not going to be sustainable. You know, yeah. Greg, I wanted to, you, you mentioned one of the things, just connecting it to the business. I mean, so many organizations are still not thinking about business strategy um, and how that connects to the experience being delivered. 
in a consistently good way too. What do you think the genesis of that? Is it just sort of the roots uh, of CX and where we kind of, you know, grew up from or, you know, what's your theory? Is it something else maybe? I, 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 I do think, think that it is part of, of the roots. And, and it's also part of this, this study that we did with uh, Heart of the Customer uh, on, on the first year uh, CX, CX Leaders Journey. And, and what happens is, is that people come in and the first thing that they're looking for is to try to make this what they call quick wins. You know, and quick wins are almost always treating the symptoms of a problem rather than treating the problem uh, itself. And so I, I think that... At, At its worst, worst customer experience becomes a um, vision uh, of somebody flying around the organization with a cape on and, and, and fixing uh, upset customers or, or broken processes. Um, and, and, and that's not sustainable. You know, uh, uh, I think it, we, we even saw in uh, the Incredibles, you know, that you shouldn't wear capes. When you're flying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, a danger, danger in and of, of itself. Um, but, but I think that, that, that that's, that's part of the problem, problem is, is it's very easy to recognize the um, voice that comes through social media and that the voice in social media often amplifies one particular instance. And, and of course, we want, want to take care of those uh, one particular, particular instances. instances. But, but more, more importantly, we want to change and design so that you never run into those one-offs. Yeah. Uh, and and if, you're, if you're always going back to symptoms, you, you often miss going to the cause. You know, at a past life, we used to call that champion bias, where like somebody would champion singular issues and run around the business, to your point, and fix these one-offs, but never connect the dots that they were maybe all interrelated to some root cause somewhere. And then who owns that in the business? How do I def define it? Uh, it really is a big issue, I think, uh, in our discipline still. I think, I think it is. And I, I think, think you hit on two, two, two very related things. things. Um, one, one is that everything is connected. connected. And, yeah. and you know, you know, what, what I'm, I'm excited about is, is that the growth in technology is now allowing us to uncover and understand those connections in ways that we never could before. before. You know, and so, so I, I think there's a bright future you know, on, on that side. Uh, and, and then, then the, the second is, you know, if we're going to live that definition of impacting the customer's perception from the first time they learn about the organization all the way through, that is not a one-to-one -one relationship with one person or one CX executive. That is bringing the capacity of our entire organizations up. And so how do we make sure that we're uh, teaching, embedding, and aligning what's going on on, on customer experience across the organization. Um, really, really the superpower of collaboration rather mm. than the uh, uh, superpower of correction, correction which, which I think was maybe, uh, did it didn't make, make us so popular A hundred percent. And kind of uh, to play on that a little bit and just pull that thread, as we think about the evolution of, of um, customer experience, Greg, and I'm sure there's something that you all talk a lot about uh, within sort of the, the walls of the CXPA, where do you see the discipline going over the next two, three years, right? Like there's, you know, the, the, the chat GPT effect right now is pretty strong, right? Um, everyone's talking about AI and the next frontier and how that's going to impact customer experience as well as employee experience for that matter. Um, where do you see it all going over the next couple of years? How, how do you think it's going to evolve and change? Yeah, yeah you know, well, first and foremost, I'm, I'm so glad that technology is developing in the ways that it is because the world around us is becoming so much more complex. Yeah. yeah, you are no longer selling to a customer that, um, I mean, I'll mention, I have a local pharmacist here in Columbia, South Carolina, and it's fantastic that when I go in, she asks about my family and, and how they're doing. She intervenes on, on our behalf when, when we need that to be done. But uh, that doesn't work when people are, are purchasing uh, through, uh, you know, across state lines or across uh, country lines. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden you have to have a much more complex system of knowledge. And uh, and what's the key there is, is that the system has to have the right design. You know, and that's why I think we're always going to have a very strong uh, future for customer experience is influencing the design of the technology systems. Uh, and, and, and figuring out how, how to, to bring those in and leverage those. those. Um, I, I think that that is also, uh, when we talk about the you know technology systems and, and the way that they can 
can, can be leveraged, leveraged is also a really important part uh, to recognize that um, technology is a tool and the tool has to be applied to the world. So, uh, um, Bill, you and I both watched the rise of QR codes. Uh, and if you remember, QR codes came out at a time where first you were like, oh, why would anyone want to use this? Why don't they just Google or uh, um, do a web search for, for what they need? And then all of a sudden, you have the pandemic and, and people need a quick and consistent and reliable way. And all of a sudden, QR codes take off. You know, so I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, there have been chat systems available for quite, quite some time, time now. Yeah. And truthfully, uh, customers, customers have been slow to adopt them. them. Uh, you, you know, know and uh, until, until we have a better design system that leverages both the uh, thoughtfulness uh, and the circumstances around us, we'll, we'll have a challenge. And then the second is, is, is we have to keep aware that uh, the world, uh, the world she's changing. changing. And, uh, you know, uh, what uh, I remember right before the pandemic, the entire design of the hospitality uh, system and, and, and even um, the way that people were driving all moved towards shared space, and shared ownership. All of a sudden, the world shifts and uh, that changes uh, as well. So uh, how do we uh, make sure that the CX team is working with the insights team? working with market research, is working with branding, is working with demographics, is looking at global migrations, looking at global economic changes and, and spaces, uh, and really becomes that internal advisor to the rest of the organization to make sure that uh, we are prepared and, and adjusted, not to get what is right. No one is going to be able to predict what is right. But to put ourselves in a position where we can go to the different different future possibilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I, so that's really important. I mean, that's one of the, I, I think, a key skill that a lot of CX teams, frankly, are missing is not just looking at what your customers are doing and saying, but really, what are those big macro trends outside of even your organization, let alone tangential to the business that you're in. But what are those big macro trends and how will those start to influence consumer behavior? And then what does that then mean for your business, which ultimately will, will lead to ex more experiential um, sort of narratives uh, from there as well. Interesting. You know, we talk a lot of, at Medallia, as you know, about uh, experience automation um, and how can we deliver uh, experiences in context in the journey um, not just sort of human to human, because there will always be interactions that require human to human, um, but also being able to deliver predictive or prescriptive um, uh, actions, as well as those uh, moments that can be automated machine to machine even, uh, where, where the digital experience comes into play. And I think that is gonna be a really um, interesting space uh, to continue to evolve and grow and learn, uh, learn within for sure. Yeah, I think that that is, you know, to, to take those words and, and to, to share that sort of wow moment, you know, one of the examples that I've heard is is uh, one of the uh, sports arenas uh, that you work with that uh, is able to uh, understand a customer's preference, uh, know that they're a season ticket holder, know that they're coming to a game, understand uh, what their preferences are for their food and beverage outlets, yeah. and to incentivize them to come early. Because... That, um, you know, in, in seeing that they're, you know, 20 minutes away, and we can all say 20 minutes away, you know, uh, um, that is uh, about 17 miles here in Columbia and about two in, uh, yeah. in D.C. Yeah. But you get that because your technology systems are connected. That's right. You know, and you know that. And then you can say to people, you know, come early. Um, you're only this many uh, minutes away. And, and people trust you because your systems work. And then they get uh, to the arena parking is easy. They uh, can go and get a seat, a reservation at their space. Uh, and that creates that frictionless experience that, you know, really you think about it from that moment, from the beginning, all the way through the end, that's a perfect example of the data that's all connected in the spaces that uh, uh, play along. there. For sure. So great. One of the things that, you know, as we think about this evolution that we just discussed, you know, where do you see the discipline you know, from a from a leader practitioner perspective, 
How do, how do they prepare for this future? You mentioned collaboration before as a really important skill, and that has been important for years, will absolutely be important you know, for the next 10, 20, 30 years, certainly in the discipline. Like what other areas are you all thinking about from a CXPA perspective even, and um, you know, the types of skill sets that you are now starting to maybe position for uh, the future for members? Yeah, thank you. you well, know, first and foremost, uh, for anyone who's tuning in, um, you are not uh, released from your responsibility to learn the CXBA CX framework <laughs> and the uh, five core competencies. Uh, you know, uh, with understanding the fundamental elements of CX strategy and voice of the customer and uh, you know data, et cetera. But uh, you know, uh, we had agreement at the recent CX Leaders Advanced Conference that. Uh, those are the baseline requirements. You know, if you want to be a CX leader, uh, you have to get serious. And, and the first thing you have to get serious about uh, really is to adopt more of a systems thinking perspective. You know, and so if you're if you're not familiar with systems thinking, I'll look back and kindly over uh, shoulder at, at, at my books over there. You know, it's important to recognize that uh, all systems have interactions with things that are around them. Uh, and there are principles, and, and we need to think about how those pieces connect. You know, uh, and I, I agree with Bill when he talks about, you know, those many different points of connection, but those kind of points of connection also go beyond your company to your suppliers, you know, to the um, political, socioeconomic uh, settings, et cetera. So adopting and strengthening your skills on, on systems thinking and the interconnections will help you break down silos. You know, so <laughs> it's, it's important in that sense. Uh, the second is absolutely that notion of uh, serving as an advisor, as a trusted advisor within your organization. You know, your goal should not be to have this best CX department. Your goal should be to have the strongest customer experience delivered by your entire organization. Mm -hmm. And that begins not by teaching everyone about CX, but by understanding everyone's roles and having them understand how they play into CX as well. So you're supporting their success at the same time they're supporting yours, because ultimately good CX is good for the customer, good for the organization and good for your, for your colleagues. And then the other one that, that I don't think people spend enough time on is, is that CX leaders need to be strong business uh, decision makers. Mm. You know, um, there are on occasion ideas that we come up with that would surprise and delight our customers that cost more money than they are worth. <laughs> you know, and so that's something that we need to know. There are times that we come up with ideas that serve a small segment of the market, but the cost to adapt to do them is a challenge. Um, there are times when it's just unfeasible to connect to the organization's brand or to its ability to, to deliver that particular service. So customer experience professionals can't always be looking to optimize what's best for the customer. They should be looking to optimize what's best in a sustainable way for the customer, the uh, organization, and, and their colleagues. You know, it's it's a three-legged stool, and you can't choose one uh, over another. Otherwise, I mean, we, we would have just had a, the day off today, Bill. You know, that's probably the probably right. <laughs> probably right. I think I think that's a really critical uh, point, Greg. I think you know, it's not just about. The, I mean, you really need to think about the business, your the shareholders, shareholder value, and business strategy, and what outcomes you can drive through a CX toolkit or an EX toolkit. Um, to whether that's driving top line growth, whether that's improving efficiency in your organization, or even thinking about how do we further enhance the culture uh, of this business. Right, those three things are what boards care about, what CEOs care about. And if you can connect those two as a CX leader, your chances of success uh, greatly, greatly improve for sure. Yeah, I've been thinking about that uh, conversation with boards and, and CEOs. And I think one of the things that makes me feel uh, particularly optimistic about the future of customer experience is if you go out and you look at the uh, top 100 most respected uh, companies uh, that uh, are in the world, uh, you will see that uh, the top companies are companies that are committed to customer experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Easy for me to recognize because they advertise on CXBA's job board. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, when you look at Apple and Amazon and Microsoft and Johnson and Johnson, uh, you know, and, and, and the other uh, 96 companies that are there, you notice that common commitment 
to uh, have that balanced. Um, I won't use balanced scorecard because I think that particular methodology, <laughs> you know, is a, is in another space. But I will say having that balanced perspective. But um, too often, because we call it customer experience, people only focus on the customer slice. And we do need to listen to our employees. We do need to listen to the business metrics. And we do need to try to find the results that will deliver a strong return on investment uh, on the balance sheet, on the employee satisfaction, and, and on the uh, customer loyalty. So, Greg, we referenced the technology a little bit earlier in the conversation. You know, what role do you see technology playing in the evolution um, of, of, of experience from your perspective? Yeah, well, let's go ahead and jump back, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and, and look at what happened in the early years. And uh, it was a great advance when we brought in uh, some of the different uh, metrics and, and particularly the customer survey feedback tools. You know, that was better than flying blind. Um, however, you know, I'd like to play this little uh, hypothetical. Could you imagine if we were successful in getting every company that you interact with to send you a customer satisfaction survey after every touch point, you would go mad. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I would be, as a consumer, I would be miserable. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think you'd probably even be miserable as, as uh, the person administering the survey. <laughs> yeah, probably, that's right. <laughs> it might be good for the, uh, for the bottom line. But, uh, you know, so I think that uh, it, it is obvious to us that we need to shift from data collection that is uh, that, is that one tool to bringing in a variety of, of different tools. And specifically, I think we need to move from spaces that require the customer to take an active um, stance or, or, or have their journey interrupted to give feedback and increase the number of ways that we can monitor and assess uh, customers. So I'm really excited about the technology that does facial recognition to be able to uh, interpret the uh, emotion. Um, excited about the technologies that help to uh, track uh, an individual shopper's journey and how much time they, they spent mm -hmm. in a space and whether they um, made a purchase, you know, or not. Um, you know, I'm excited to see the, the analyses that are happening to uh, give feedback uh, on um, what people are saying on social media, yeah. those areas. So those are all, those are all good inputs. I think what we need to uh, give more thought in space is how can technology, um, one, look at the patterns uh, across those different spaces and surface those for a CX leader and their colleagues to work on and, and look at. You know, the reality is, is, is that simple analysis is not always going to give you a solution. You know, it, it, it may well tell you that uh, everyone is... Uh, moving away from the last gas pump. Well, that doesn't yeah. tell you that you shouldn't have the last gas pump. <laughs> it tells you you should probably go see what's wrong with the last gas pump. <laughs> yeah. um, the other elements that I'm excited about is, is how can we use technology to prototype uh, and to roll out uh, new pieces and to do more A-B testing? Mm. You know, uh, um, what better than to be able to uh, quickly iterate and try and, and let uh, our customers and our employees have a voice uh, in the selection of, of what is working and, and, and what is not working. So I'm really excited about that. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what are you most excited about on the technology side, Bill? Well, you know, like I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big student of you know, where technology and devices for consumers are going, right? And just recently, as you know, we had the announcement uh, by Apple about Vision Pro, which is really exciting. I think wearables um, or new technology like no and low code, um, um, uh, it, it, this type of thing, these type of things are really going to fundamentally change the way we interact with brands generally. I mean, if you watched you know, the Apple sort of keynote and, and Vision Pro and that, um, and that video and, and the conversation around the product, you can really start to see how not only from a consumer perspective, but even from a business to business perspective, you know, these devices are going to fundamentally change the way we live and operate uh, and interact. Um, maybe not this year, but at some point, certainly in, in, in the near future and not too distant future. And, you know, when I think about sort of even, you know, my role at Medallia and 
you know, our position on the importance of signal capture beyond surveys um, and not just sort of direct, you know, not just indirect feedback, but also even bringing in operational and financial data uh, into the mix to understand, you know, the full sort of hierarchy of metrics from your operational metrics, whether that could be first call resolution to those um, more behavioral metrics and experiential metrics. And then what are the outcomes uh, that uh, those behaviors drive for an organization? And then how do we connect top to bottom that metric architecture in a way that helps not only organizations make better, faster decisions, um, frankly, in real time even, but also as consumers, right? How, how is that information potentially being relayed back to us to make better decisions in the moment, um, whether that's through, you know, just a voice assistant or whatever that might be at some point in the future uh, to help guide us uh, through our own needs and, and intents, depending on whether the brands we're buying from or the spaces that, you know, we frequent. That to me is really um, a, a really interesting space where I'm, I'm personally just putting a lot of, you know, brain, brain, brain space into just because I think the interplay of data between the brand and the consumer and how we can be helping each other improve those experiences, sort of those real-time A-B tests almost even, yeah. uh, to, to, right? That to me is really exciting um, uh, and something that I personally as a consumer uh, can't wait for. And uh, that does pose challenges, right? I mean, that's going to expand data like massively, right? So that will create its own set uh, of new problems too. Well, it, it is interesting when you say that, you know, because I, I, one, I love your passion as you're talking about it. And for those that are that are, are tuning in and might be intimidated, you know, by Bill's, Bill's statement, you know, I, I think he, he, he would agree that this is uh, really an example of the good, better, best, uh, you know, never let it rest. Keep your um, uh, keep working till your uh, good is better and your better is best, you know, so. Yeah. If you're just at the uh, uh, basic survey time now, this is great. But think about what you're building, what you're building next. I would compliment what you're saying is, is saying we're also going to see that same thing on the employee and knowledge management side. You know, uh, increasingly, uh, employees are working remotely. Uh, they're yeah. working in cross-functional teams. They're, and when I say cross-functional teams, this is no longer, you know, marketing and uh, sales uh, working together. This is people coming from all sorts of different parts of the organization, sometimes across national boundaries. And that's all enabled by this understanding of where people's particular skills are. You know, who yeah. is an expert in the data analysis? Who's the expert in the text analysis? Um, and really to be able to think about how in the future uh, we're going to have, I think, many more free agents you know, who are uh, working as independent consultants or are, are working in smaller consultancies that are partnering, you know, to be able to connect brands to platforms, to expertise. And, you know, whether that team is is coming to you from your internal side or from a trusted partner or, or another space, uh, the real question is, is can they bring the skills to the table when you need them now, rather yeah. than you know, uh, the same problem we had with, with CX at the beginning, which is only getting the feedback a month or a quarter after, <laughs> you know, everything's being shortened. How do I find somebody who has time today to help me solve my problem? Yeah. And that, and I take that back to experience automation, right? So, you know, especially that in moment, like, you know, obviously if you are, uh, I'll take the example of, you know, a mortgage foreclosure, that's not something that's going to be a purely digital experience, nor should it ever be. Right. Um, or, you know, maybe uh, a life insurance event. Um, you know, these are things where you really do need uh, human interaction. But how do you think about leverage technology to deliver uh, and close the loop even? Right. Um, you know, that inner loop uh, piece uh, in real time. Um, you know, unfortunately, kind of given the times where we are, no one's adding more employees to close the loop with their customers. So, you know, how do you how do you automate some of this and, and give sort of the close of feedback process and scale. And, and I love that. But uh, I mean, your, your point is so strong uh, that there are certain things that humans want humans to help them with, you know? And so uh, that thought of how technology can be an aid to take care of the routine uh, and allow the humans to focus in on the spaces that uh, yeah. require uh, compassion and empathy. That's a real strength of a, of, of a good CX program. Yeah, 100%.
Craig, I'm curious, where, where do you see or what is the CXPA's role in the future of CX? Yeah, I, you know, I think that uh, one of the key things that we have to keep in mind is, is that customer experience understanding is still uh, very uh, uh, differential across the globe. And so one of the things that we're very passionate about is to helping to meet companies and individuals where they are in their CX mm -hmm. journey. And so uh, we are working to make sure that if a company is just getting started, uh, that they can get advice uh, on the steps that are appropriate uh, for them at that point. Uh, and if a company is much more advanced for, for people to recognize that uh, just because you've done it for a number of years, just because you can compare uh, he, he, metric A or B uh, to the previous quarter doesn't mean that it's important anymore. <laughs> you know, how do we help you uh, take your program to that next space? So we will continue to uh, publish uh, independent standards uh, and uh, publications. Um, one that I'm really excited about uh, will come out on CX Day, and it will be discussing the connection between diversity, equity, and inclusion and customer awesome. experience. But uh, we'll have two others, one on, on data and one on uh, operations. Uh, and then we're also looking at the question on uh, how we can help uh, organizations um, better understand the fundamental level of competency that they need to have. You know, uh, there are a lot of great maturity tools that are out there. There are a lot of yeah. great awards that are out there. But if I were to say, what is the one thing that I would like to have? I would like to have better understanding across all organizations of what customer experience means and what a customer experience program looks like um, so that uh, uh, we don't have this question. You know, nobody questions what we mean by financial management. <laughs> Why are they questioning what we mean by customer experience management? Um, just have to do my job better. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Greg, this has been a great conversation. Thanks for joining us. Uh, before we wrap up, though, um, for those individuals who are listening or watching, um, and maybe aren't members of the CXPA, but want to learn more, where can they find you or the organization? That's great. Yeah, let me give you two links uh, for people who are, are looking in. If you are excited about the conversation that we're having on customer experience and you want to help increase that understanding, uh, please visit whatiscx.com and share that. Um, you'll find some great little videos that are intended for you to explain to your spouse, your children, your coworkers, <laughs> what customer experience is, uh, is about uh, and to get them equally excited. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, learning more and, and getting involved with the CXBA community, which is just a fabulous uh, community, please visit us on the web at cxbaglobal.org. That's awesome. You know, Greg, uh, just a really funny, quick anecdote. I really wish I had the website, whatiscx.com, about 22 years ago, because when I was first married to my wife, someone asked my mother-in-law, what does Bill do for a living? And she said, oh, he's a hotel concierge. So it really <laughs> would have been great to say, well, here's a website that explains it all for you, you know? <laughs> That's great. Uh, um, well, thanks again, Greg. It's wonderful uh, to have you on. I really hope we get an opportunity to meet uh, in person again uh, really, really soon. And thanks for our viewers here. We appreciate you uh, tuning into Leading with Experience uh, Medallia. Have a wonderful day.